The very word secrecy is repugnant in a free and open society. And we are, as a people, inherently and historically opposed to secret societies, to secret oaths, and to secret proceedings. We decided long ago that the dangers of excessive and unwarranted concealment of pertinent facts far outweighed the dangers which are cited to justify it. Even today, there is little value in opposing the threat of a closed society by imitating its arbitrary restrictions. Even today, there is little value in ensuring the survival of our nation if our traditions do not survive with it. And there is very grave danger that an announced need for increased security will be seized upon by those anxious to expand its meaning to the very limits of official censorship and concealment. That I do not intend to permit to the extent that it's in my control. And no official of my administration, whether his rank is high or low, civilian or military, should interpret my words here tonight as an excuse to censor the news, to stifle dissent, to cover up our mistakes, or to withhold from the press and the public the facts they deserve to know. Don't let anybody make you think that God chose America as his divine messianic force to be a sort of policeman of the whole world. God has a way of standing before the nations with judgment and it seems that I can hear God saying to America, you are too arrogant. If you don't change your ways, I will rise up and break the backbone of your power and I'll place it in the hands of a nation that doesn't even know my name. Be still and know that I'm God. The promises of the great society have been shut down on the battlefield of Vietnam, making the poor, white and Negro, bear the heaviest burdens both at the front and at home. Though the civil rights leaders, for various reasons, refuse or can't take a stand or have to go along with the administration, that's their business. But I I'm afraid that I know that justice is indivisible. Injustice anywhere is the threat to justice everywhere. In the response and dedication of our citizens, whenever they are fully informed, I not only could not stifle controversy among your readers, I welcome it. This administration intends to be candid about its errors. For as a wise man once said, an error doesn't become a mistake until you refuse to correct it. We made the wrong diagnosis, we should train, change the treatment. So we're not making progress there and we should come home. The weapons weren't there and we went in under UN resolutions and, and our national security was not threatened. We're more threatened now by staying. We intend to accept full responsibility for our errors and we expect you to point them out when we miss them. Without debate, without criticism, no administration and no country can succeed, and no republic can survive. That is why the Athenian lawmaker Sola decreed it a crime for any citizen to shrink from controversy. And that is why our press was protected by the First Amendment, the only business in America specifically protected by the Constitution not primarily to amuse and entertain, not to emphasize the trivial and the sentimental, not to simply give the public what it wants, but to inform, to arouse, to reflect, to state our dangers and our opportunities, to indicate our crises and our choices, to lead, mold, educate, and sometimes even anger public opinion. This means greater coverage and analysis of international news, for it is no longer far away and foreign, but close at hand and local. It means greater attention to improved understanding of the news, as well as improved transmission. And it means, finally, that government at all levels 
must meet its obligation to provide you with the fullest possible information outside the narrowest limits of national security. And so it is to the printing press, to the recorder of man's deeds, the keeper of his conscience, the courier of his news, that we look for strength and assistance, confident that with your help, man will be what he was born to be, free and independent, free and independent, free and independent. I'm Ron Paul. I'm a congressman from Texas, serving in my 10th term. I am the champion of the Constitution. We now promote preemptive war. I do not believe that's part of the American tradition. We in the past have always declared war in the defense of our liberties or go to aid somebody. But now we have accepted the principle of preemptive war. We have rejected the just war theory of Christianity. And now, Tonight, we hear that we're not even willing to remove from the table a preemptive nuclear strike against the country that has done no harm to us directly and our, is no threat to our national security. I mean, we have to come to our senses about this issue of war and preemption and go back to traditions and our Constitution and defend our liberties and defend our, our rights, but not to think that we can change the world by force of arms and to start war. The people who say there will be a bloodbath are the ones who said it would be a cakewalk, it would be a slam dunk, and that it would be paid for by oil. Why believe them? They've been wrong on everything they've said. So why not ask the people, why not ask the people who advise not to go in into the region and into the war? The war has not gone well one bit. Yes, I would leave, I, I would leave completely. Why leave the troops in the region? It was the fact that we had troops in Saudi Arabia was the re one of the three reasons given for the attack on 9-11. So why leave them in the region? They don't want our troops on the Arabian Peninsula. We have no need for our national security to have troops on the Arabian Peninsula. And going into Iraq and Afghanistan and threatening Iran is the worst thing we can do for our national security. I am less safe. The American people are less safe for this. It's the policy that is wrong. Tactical movements and shifting troops around and taking in 30 more and reducing by five, totally irrelevant. We need a new foreign policy that said we ought to mind our own business, bring our troops home, defend this country, defend our borders. So, so, so if... So Congressman Paul, and I'd like you to take 30 seconds to answer this, you're basically saying that we should take our marching orders from Al-Qaeda if they want us off the Arabian Peninsula, we should leave? No! I'm saying, I'm saying we should take our marching orders from our Constitution. We should not go to war. We should not go to war without a declaration. We should not go to war when it's an aggressive war. This is an aggressive invasion. We've committed the invasion of this war. And it's illegal under international law. The American people didn't go in. A few people ad ad advising this administration, a small number of people called the neoconservatives, hijacked our foreign policy. They're responsible, not the American people. They're not responsible. We shouldn't punish them. Congressman, we are one nation. We can't be divided. We have to be one nation under God. That means if we make a mistake, we make it as a single country, the United States of America, no. not the divided states of America. When we make a mistake, when we make a mistake, it is the obligation of the people through their representatives to correct the mistake, not to continue the mistake.